When this young man went on a hike in the mountainous region of Oregon, he came across something that made his heart drop. In his path, he found a baby bear on the brink of death. So, he did what any good-hearted person would do, try to save it. What happened later really made everyone stop in awe. Helping any sort of wildlife in the park is strictly prohibited by law and can result in a hefty fine and even a threat of being jailed. This didn't stop John from doing what he thought was right. John was an avid hiker, nature was his place of solace. Working in a corporate environment had its perks, but it wasn't really good for his mental health. Sitting at a desk behind a computer, working with numbers all day long, was definitely detrimental to the soul. However, he knew the perfect way to recharge his batteries, a good old hike in the mountains. Being able to have that balance in his life truly drove him to be as successful as he was. Every weekend, he made a point of going out into nature and moving his body, reminding himself of what life was like outside the office. His hobby had begun when his dad decided to take him on a camping trip when he was just 13 years old. That experience had ignited a passion in him for the outdoors. While hiking and trekking were great for the physical and mental well-being of an individual, they also posed some undeniable threats to safety, and that was something John was going to find out very soon. John was well-versed in how to deal with possible dangers in the mountains, especially predators. Wolves and bears were at the top of his list. However, since John was such an avid park-goer, he was a part of the ranger's communication line. So, he always got updates on wildlife activity. If there was a bear on the prowl causing trouble somewhere in the woods, he would be notified and would be able to stay clear of that particular area. Up until now, the system had worked successfully for John, save for that one moment when he had seen a mother bear and her cubs roaming a pasture in the distance. While he was caught off guard, he had been reassured by the distance between them and had taken a moment to appreciate the beautiful sight. He remembered distinctly how the little ones had frolicked around behind their mother as they made their way through the pasture. He had noticed the similarities between those sweet cubs and human toddlers with their unsteady movements and mischievous behavior. Little did John know how this comparison would one day make him do something he had never thought of ever doing. Spring had just arrived in the park when John decided to finally get back into his hiking. His wife had recently given birth to a baby, and he had been preoccupied with the new family member, as anyone would be. It was a glorious time in their household. However, now with the baby and John's stressful job, he felt the need to get outdoors even more than before. That's what convinced him to embark on this particular trip. His little one was now three months old, and his wife kept encouraging him to go on a hiking trip. She was happy to go to her parents' place and relax while he did what he loved most. After much convincing, John decided to follow her advice and make the most of the long weekend that was approaching. He took a week to plan out his route and gather supplies. He decided that he would embark on a three-day hiking trip through the mountains. The idea was to park his car at the entrance and then make his way deep into the park, camp for two nights, and then make his way back. However, he didn't anticipate that something unexpected would make him cut his trip short early. On Friday morning, John kissed his wife and child goodbye and went on his way. The weather forecast looked promising, and this time of year was his favorite. Springtime in the park was always the best. Everything was coming back to life after a bare winter, and the air smelled like new beginnings. The trees were regaining their lush green foliage, and animals were running around with their newly born little ones. It was certainly a time when life was all around and quite celebrated, just what John needed. To connect with nature, he arrived at the park and started piling on his gear for his hike. He had packed light and compact so that it was easy to move around. Breathing in the fresh air, as he took his first steps, John could not help but feel rejuvenated. The trails were not as busy as he had anticipated, but this was the opposite of a problem for him. He certainly enjoyed the less traveled trail. Fate was looking out that day because if John hadn't taken that particular path, he never would have come across what he did. John had only been hiking for an hour when he stumbled upon something that literally changed all his plans. At first, he was unsure of what it was, but the closer he got, 
the clearer it became. Lying on the ground, unconscious, was a black bear cub. It could hardly have been a month old, small and frail looking. It was curled upon the trail and didn't look too good at all. John was apprehensive. Surely with a bear cub this young lying out in the open, the mother had to be close by. He crouched for a few minutes in the bushes and just watched, but nothing happened. Slowly rising, John then stood on a nearby boulder to get a better vantage point. He looked around slowly for the mother bear, but again couldn't see anything. He really didn't want to get caught between a mother and her cub. That was practically a death sentence. After realizing that the mother wasn't around, John ran to the cub's side. Up close, it looked to be in even worse condition than he had realized. Its little lips were blue, and its eyes rolled back into its head. It was clearly not just having a snooze. John placed his hand very close to the cub's nose to try and see if it was breathing. That's when he felt extremely faint air. This little bear was clearly in big trouble. John didn't know what to do. He couldn't leave the bear there for dead, but he also knew that if he got involved, he could face a massive fine and even jail time. That was definitely out of the question. However, as he looked down, he couldn't help but notice the resemblance between the little bear and his own baby at home. He made up his mind. He was going to do something regardless of the possible consequences. He gently lifted the cub up in his arms like a baby and turned back on the trail. He knew that he needed to get the cub some medical attention, and fast. The fact that its small body didn't react at all to him picking it up told John that time was indeed running out. He hiked as fast as he could back to his car, all the while checking behind him to ensure that the mother bear wasn't about to pounce. He managed to get back to the car successfully, but when he checked the cub's pulse, there was no sign of life. Somewhere in the last ten minutes, the bear had stopped breathing. John could hardly swallow. The cub in his arms was technically dead. Now what did he do? The only thing he could. He gave the little cub mouth to mouth, just as he had learned to do for his child, praying that it would work. He did it consistently for a solid three minutes, and thankfully, the cub started breathing again. John was ecstatic, but he knew he couldn't waste any more time. Placing the small bear on his jacket in the passenger seat, he jumped into the driver's seat and set off to the nearest vet. Luckily, it was only ten minutes away. When he walked into the clinic with the cub, everyone in the room froze. They could hardly believe what they were seeing. The doctors quickly snapped out of their stupor and ran forward to help. John explained the situation, and the vet ran into the operating room with the cub. There, he was able to stabilize the poor little bear. What happened later to the cub will really amaze you. The local wildlife authorities were able to rehabilitate the little bear and even return it to its mother. It turns out the cub had fallen from a cliff and received a severe head injury. The mother had been restless and searching for him ever since. The park authorities had heard reports of a bear behaving strangely, and when they found out about the injured cub, they simply put two and two together. Today, that little cub lives safely with its mother where it should be, all thanks to John's generosity and kind heart. What a lovely story. Would you have helped the bear too, regardless of the consequences? Tigers are dangerous, vicious and territory conscious animals. But when a tigress and her cub needed help, a kind hunter stepped forward to help. But the way the tigress repaid the man surprised everyone. Alex is a skilled and experienced hunter who has lived in Thailand for many years and moved there since he was a little boy. He loves this beautiful country and likes to explore its proud tropical rainforest. There are too many things to see and do there. The number of wild animals is incredible, and Alex had the privilege of tracking and hunting many animals there. He certainly didn't do it for sports. He hunts to protect local villages and other animals. This is what he is good at. And gave him the opportunity to meet some of the wildest, rarest and most extraordinary animals on earth in their natural habitats. His latest task is to protect a remote village. It is located on the edge of tropical rainforest. 
locals report that a tigress keeps coming out of the forest and venturing closer and closer to their home in search of food. Obviously, this may bring disaster to human beings, so tigress must be dealt with. Alex knows how dangerous tigers are, and if the report is true and the tiger's partner comes with her, it will be even more dangerous. He must proceed with caution. After arriving at the village, Alex settled down and met the local people. They were superstitious and gave him various spells to take into the rainforest for protection. Alex didn't know if he believed in such things, but he accepted them gratefully and set off to try to see the tigress. The first few days are used to track the tigress and her cubs and understand their schedules. Where they live, what they do and so on. But it didn't take Alex long to find these animals. They entered the forest only a few hundred meters in a small open space. Alex set up a small camp far enough away to observe them. When he watched, he saw the little tigers running and playing. They're cute. But he knew how dangerous they were too, so he kept his distance. One thing Alex noticed was how thin the animals were. It's as if they haven't had a good meal in a long time. Alex frowned and looked carefully through his binoculars. He could see the ribs through their fur, a sign that the animals were hungry, and it was no wonder they had been venturing to the village in search of food. Alex thought quickly, opened his backpack and took out his meal. He had enough food for him to eat for a few days, but he could not make the tiger and her cubs look so hungry, so he approached the animals as close as he could, and laid his food gently on the ground. The number is small, but it is enough for the little tiger and tigress to enjoy the much-needed snacks. Smelling the smell of food, eyes fell on Alex, and the tigress stood up and approached slowly and carefully. But Alex retreated slowly and calmly, respecting the tigress and her space. When the food arrived, the tigress and her cubs quickly ate up all the food. This is obviously a welcome meal. The tigress looked up from the crumbs left on the floor, looked Alex in the eye, then turned and walked back to the clearing. Alex thought it was strange. He was sure that the tiger might start following him and that he would have to withdraw quickly to the village. But that didn't happen. This is certainly unusual. Still, Alex was glad that the tigress and her cubs were full, and he returned to the village in search of more supplies. Next time, however, he brought more food back to the tropical rainforest. Again he brought the appetizing meal as close as possible to the tiger, and watched her and her children wolfing it down. It was really a special sight, and he felt good because he provided them with the food they needed so much. This went on for weeks, and every day or two Alex would bring some food to the animals, which would gobble them up as soon as they arrived. It's like they're used to Alex's presence now. What's more, he brought them food. Despite this, Alex kept a safe distance. He is still very aware of the dangers of tigers and that they can easily kill a person if they want to. But one thing brought him back again and again. He could see the tigress and her cubs getting stronger and healthier. Through the smooth fur, he couldn't even see their ribs. But one day, something happened that could mean the end of Alex. He brought them a fawn that the villagers had captured the day before, and put it near the mouth of the cave as usual. But today is a little different. The tigress seemed very nervous, and the little tiger was by her side, not playing and running as usual. Alex retreated to relative safety and watched. None of them showed any interest in food, and just then he heard a voice close behind him. Turning slowly, he noticed that there was a big male tiger only a few feet away. Alex panicked and ran instinctively. He knew it was illogical, but he couldn't stop himself. He jumped up from behind the tree and ran to the open space. When the male tiger pounced on Alex, the tigress and her cubs scattered. The male tiger threw himself on Alex, and Alex fell heavily to the ground. He felt his ankle twist and break. He closed his eyes and waited for a fatal blow but the tigress rushed to the male tiger, slammed him and made him escape back to the jungle. Alex was glad he was still alive, even though he was in great pain. He could not move, and he knew that if he did, the tigress would surely eat him as a meal. 
He felt blood flowing from his wound, and he prayed that someone could save him. But the chances are slim. The village is so far away that there is no one else to help. But what happened next was a miracle. In fact, Alex couldn't believe what was happening. The tigress grabbed Alex by the back of his clothes and began to drag him away. Alex is convinced that this is the end, and he will be eaten alive. He didn't know where he had been taken. But he was well aware that he could not make any noise, which might provoke the tigress and make it attack and kill him more quickly. Understandably, he was afraid and silently prayed that everything would end quickly and painlessly. But just then, Alex noticed something surprising, and the trees began to dissipate. In the distance, he could hear a sound, a familiar sound. This is a nearby village. The tigress is dragging him to a safe place there. When she dragged Alex through a hole into the village square, two little tigers trotted happily with Alex. The villagers all flinched and ran back to their homes, though the tigress ignored them. She was happy that Alex was safe. She let go of him and sniffed his ankle again. All the fear suddenly disappeared from Alex, and he smiled. The tigress saved his life. She took him there for help. Alex couldn't believe her luck as she and her children walked back to the forest. Yes, tigers can be dangerous, vicious and territory-conscious animals. But the tiger repaid his kindness in the most special way, and he will never forget it. Best of all, from then on, villagers will leave food on the edge of tropical rainforest for tigers to pick up when they are hungry. They have seen the magic of tigress and want to help them when food is scarce. This story shows that human beings and animals can live together peacefully and happily.